Hi, my name is Kimberly from Deepin Development. Today I'm going to show you how to import data from ISAMS into Raised Edge using Importacular. So, first of all, open up Importacular in the plugins area of Razor's Edge, select ISAMS, and click Start. And then choose the data that you want to bring into Razor's Edge. So you can filter on the year group, the enrollment year, or you can choose a date from which the contacts will last change. So I'm going to select a year group. So we can see straight away that we've got 48 records for review. We can then select our mapping template. And let's take a look at the mapping template I've created so you can see how the data comes into Razor's Edge. So this is completely customizable. You can see Along the top, we've got all the different areas of Razor's Edge, constituents, addresses, etc. And then down the side, within that tab, you'll see the different areas that you can map data to. So, first of all, I've created a pupil record. And this is going to be, it's going to come in as a constituent. And you can see on the left, I've got the Razor's Edge fields. And in the middle, I've got the source field name, so the ISAMS field name. But I can also add a default value as well. So here we've got birthday in Razor's Edge. And if I click on the little arrow here, it will show me all the available fields from ISAMS that I can map to the birthday. So I've obviously chosen date of birth. And then I've also created forename, gender, middle name, surname, and title. And you can fill in as many or as few of these fields as you wish. Let's take a look at some of the other areas. I've created the uh, constituent alias with the ISAMS ID. And then you can see here, I've also set up the parent of the pupil and that's created here. So it's added as an individual relationship to the pupil as well as being a constituent record in its own right. If I go to the address tab, I've got the pupil address, the parent address, the parent email and phone and the parent emergency number on the pupil's record as a phone number. Again, let's take a quick look at the addressing address mapping I've created here. So very straightforward, just mapping the address line one to the Razor's Edge address fields. I've created an info source of ISAMS, so I'm going to add that as a default. And any fields that are mandatory in Razor's Edge, such as the address type, will have a little green tick on the left here. So you can either have a source field name there or you can create a default value. In addition, I've created some education information. So I've got the pupil education information on the main education tab and I've got three attributes. I've got the form they're in, the pupil type and the boarding house as well. So once you're happy with the template, we can save that. We're going to create a control report and this will just show us any errors that there might be during the processing and give us a summary of the data we've processed as well. And we can create a Razor's Edge query of new and updated constituents so we can find them easily when we go back into Razor's Edge. So if we hit continue, then we'll be taken to our review screen. So here we can see all of the data before it goes into Razor's Edge so we can make sure we're happy with it. On the left, you can see the action to take and all of these are marked as create. So that means that there were no matches found in Razor's Edge. So these are brand new records that are going to be created. If it had found a match in Razor's Edge, You'd see it down here in the bottom bar. And if there was more than one, then you can open those and take a look at them and choose which one you want to update. And if you click on the drop down here, you can see that if the program isn't sure whether or not to update a record, or if there's more than one match, then it'll be marked as decide and you need to make a decision. You can choose to ignore a record and that will push it to the control report. And you can choose to update an existing record. If for any reason the record you want to update isn't found here, you can search for it by using find match constituents um, and then you can update a record that you select. So this is your uh, summary page. We can then click across the tabs and uh, drill down into the data in detail. So here we can see the pupil mapping with all of the fields that I inputted. So I've got the title, the surname, the first name, the gender and the birth date and the middle name. I've also got the ISAMS ID as the constituent alias. I've got the addresses in here. And as you can see, again, we've got the pupil, the parent address, the parent email, the parent phone number. And here we've got the parent details as well. So again, we're going to have a, the constituent action. So whether or not to create the parent and the, rea and the action for the relationship. So that's going to create the relationship record as well. And finally, the education data here. So if you spot a mistake in your, in your data whilst you're looking through 
any of these tabs. Anything that's in black, you can make a change to. So if you see something that you know is wrong, you can just correct it on the fly without having to go into, the, into ISAMs and mess around with your data before bringing it in. So once you're happy with everything that's in here, you can import it into Razor's Edge. But before you do that, you can also validate it. And that just means that it's going to check everything against your Razor's Edge fields and make sure that it's all going to import correctly before you start doing that processing. So if we click on validate, it will check through all of our 48 records to make sure that they're all going to import correctly. So that means checking against code tables and any other business rules that we've got set up in Razor's Edge. This all looks good. We've got 47 records that are going to be new in Razor's Edge and one skipped record, which is the one that I selected to skip at the very top. So if we're happy with that, we can uncheck the validate only box and import the records now. Take my query of new and updated records. And that will start the import. So as you can see, it'll go through each record just as it did with the validation and import those into Razor's Edge. If there are any errors, then you'll see a red circle in the status bar instead of the green tick. But it looks like all of these are importing just fine. So once that's complete, we can see the summary here. The control report will also give us a summary of the data that we've imported. But let's take a look at some of those records. So we'll come out of Importacular. Let's go and find our query. So you'll see here that we've got around 90 records. So that's because 48 of those are the individual constituent records and then the additional ones are the relationship records we've created. So let's take a look at the top one, which is a pupil record. So we can see here we've got all the information that we selected, first name, surname, middle name, titles, gender, birth date. We can see her address here and we can see her emergency number as well. If we take a look at the alias, we can see her ISAMS ID. And in relationships, we've got her school. So let's have a quick look at that with her academic house, her status, her class of year. And under attributes, we've got her boarding house, her form and her pupil type. We've also got her father listed as a relationship. So we can see his record here with all of those details, his telephone number, his email address, exactly as you would put it in if you were entering it yourself. And that's it. I hope that's useful. If you have any other questions about Importacular and ISAMS, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our website is www.zeman.info. Thanks for listening.